This video is about understanding the relationship between sides of a right triangle and trigonometric ratios. So with trigonometric ratios, there are three trig functions. There is sine, cosine, and tangent. They are all based off of a right triangle. So in a right triangle, the other two angles are used as reference angles. So in this case, it's using D as the reference angle, but L could also be the reference angle. Based on the reference angle, Knowing our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides are important because it will help us set up our ratios. So sine is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent. So a way to help us remember the trig ratios is by the saying SOHCAHTOA. So SOHCAHTOA, sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So we have so So, in number one, using A as the reference angle, across from A is the opposite, next to A is the adjacent, and across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So, if we want the sine of A, we would have 15 over 17. We're just setting up fractions using the sides measures provided. The cosine of A, then, is adjacent over hypotenuse, 8 over 17, and the tangent is Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which would be 15 over 8. If we use our different side as our reference, our angle as our reference, so now we're using C, the opposite and the adjacent sides are going to switch. The hypotenuse remains the same. So the sine of C is 8 over 17. The cosine of C is 15 over 17. And the hypotenuse, or and the tangent is 8 over 15. So notice that because the opposite adjacent side switch, the fractions for the sine and cosine are going to switch, and the tangent is going to be the reciprocal. So number two, we want to find the ratios. But we can't find the ratios yet because we are missing one of the sides. So because it's a right triangle, we can do Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side. So we get 1,156 equals 256 plus x squared. 900 equals x squared, so x is 30. Now that we have our missing side, we can complete our ratios. So the sine of h is our opposite over hypotenuse, so the side opposite of h is 30, and the hypotenuse is 34, so it's 30 over 34, which reduces to 15 over 17. For the tangent of t, we have the opposite over the adjacent, so the opposite side is 16, and the adjacent side is 30. Even though there's two adjacent sides, we know that one of them is the hypotenuse, so it can't be the adjacent side. That's why it's 30. So we have 16 over 30, which reduces to 8 over 15. The tangent of h, the opposite and the adjacent side switch here. So now the opposite side is 30, and the adjacent side is 16, which reduces to 15 over 8, and then the tan the cotangent of t is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so the adjacent side to t is 30, the hypotenuse is 34, which reduces to 15 over 17. In number 3, we again are missing one of our side lengths, so we can do Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. 20 squared equals 10 squared plus x squared. 100 equals 100 plus x squared, 300 equals x squared, so when we take the square root, we get 10 root 3. So for the sine of h, we have the opposite over the hypotenuse, so we would have 10 root 3 over 20, which reduces to root 3 over 2. For the tangent of t, we have the opposite over the adjacent, so 10 over 10 root 3. Remember, we can't have a root in the denominator, so when we multiply here, root 3 over root 3 gets us 10 root 3 over
over 10 time frames, we can reduce because the tens will cancel out to root 3 over 3. The tangent of h is our opposite over our adjacent, so now it's 10 root 3 over 10, which reduces to root 3 over 1. And then we have the cosine of t, which is the adjacent 10 root 3 over the hypotenuse of 20, and that reduces to 3 root 2, root 3 over 2. In number four, when we are finding the sine of C. So in order to find the sine of C, we need to use a right triangle. So because CUS did not have a right angle in it, we extended with these dotted lines to create the right angle. Now, in order to get the opposite side from C, we need to do Pythagorean theorem using the dotted triangle. So we would have 17 squared equals 8 squared plus, we'll call it x squared, 289 equals 64 plus x squared. When we subtract 64, x squared equals 225. So x is 15. In this triangle, our hypotenuse is the 24. So our sine of angle C is going to equal 15 over 24, which will reduce to 5 eighths. In number five, we want to find the sine of A. The problem is that we don't have a right angle yet. So in this isosceles triangle, we can draw a height in, which is going to bisect our base into 10 and 10. So we can do Pythagorean theorem then to find the height. So 24 squared equals 10 squared plus x squared. 576 equals 100 plus x squared. 76 equals x squared. So when we reduce, we get 2 root 119. If we want the sine of angle A, we are going to focus that on the right triangle. So we have the sine of angle A. And when we use our right triangle, the opposite side is going to be that height that we found. And the hypotenuse is going to be 24. So we have 2 root 119 over 24. 2 and 24 reduce, so we get root 119 over 12. In number 6, we want to find the cosine of S, the sine of angle B, and the tangent of LUS. So before we do that, we need to find some of the missing sides in our triangle. So first I'm going to find BL by using the altitude hypotenuse theorem. So I can do 12 squared equals 24 times x. 144 equals 24x. When we divide, x is 6. So now that we know x is 6, we can do the Pythagorean theorem twice to find the last two missing sides. So in the smaller triangle, we have y squared equals 6 squared plus 12 squared. We get y squared equals 180. So y is 6 root 5. And then the middle-sized triangle of LUS, we have Z squared equals 12 squared plus 24 squared. So we get Z squared is equal to 720. So Z equals 12 root 5. Now, when we're trying to find sine, cosine, tangent, there's a lot of right triangles here. It doesn't matter what you use as long as you're using a right triangle. So I try to use the smaller triangles because it has a little less of reducing that I have to do. So if I'm doing the cosine of S, I'm going to use the triangle LUS. So if we are doing the cosine of angle S, we are doing the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is going to be 24, and the hypotenuse is 12 root 5. We need to rationalize to get the root out of the bottom. So we have 24 root 5 over 12 times 5. The 12 and the 24 can reduce, so we are left with 2 root 5 over 5. To find the sine of B, I'm going to use the smaller triangle again because it makes the numbers a little bit easier to reduce so the sine of angle b is the opposite over the hypotenuse 
12 over 6 root 5. We're going to rationalize by multiplying by root 5 over root 5. We get 12 root 5 over 6 times 5, which reduces to 2 root 5 over 5. So notice, even though we used different triangles, like I said, it doesn't matter what right triangles we use because B and S are the angles in the largest triangle. Their sine and cosine are still going to be the same because they're the different angles. Then we want to find the tangent of LUS. So LUS, I'm going to use that red triangle again. So our tangent of angle LUS is the opposite 24 over the adjacent 12, which reduces to 2 over 1. In number seven, we want to find which of the following is equal to B over A. So I'm going to add another letter for our third side here and call this C. So the sine of A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is A over C, not what we're looking for. The sine of B is B over C, again, not what we're looking for. The tangent of A is A over B. We want the reciprocal, which is going to be the tangent of B. In 8, 9, and 10, we want to have a triangle, and we're going to find the missing side so that we can find a new trig ratio. So number 8, we're given that triangle PIG. If the cosine of P is 12 over 37, find the sine of P. So in this right triangle, the only thing that I need to worry about is that the angle given to me is not the right angle. So I'm going to call P over here. Based on P, we have our opposite, our hypotenuse, and our adjacent sides. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 37. So in order to find the sine of P, we need to know the opposite side. So we're going to do Pythagorean theorem first. So when we do Pythagorean theorem, we get 1,369 is equal to 144 plus x squared. 1,225 equals x squared. We take our square root, x is 35. So our missing side is 35. Then we can find the sine of P, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have 35 over 37. In number nine for our right triangle, we have given triangle tug. If the tangent of G is 3 over 4, find the cosine of G. So we know G, we know our opposite, our hypotenuse, and our adjacent. Tangent uses the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is a side length of 3, adjacent is a length of 4. We can do Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side. So x squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. x squared equals 25. So x is 5. Then if we are going to do the cosine of G, that is our adjacent over hypotenuse, so we have 4 over 5. In number 10, given triangle big, if the sine of B is 7 over 24, find the tangent of B. So we have opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. In sine, we know that we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, so the opposite 7, the hypotenuse is 25. We can do Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side. So we get 576 equals x squared, x is 24. If we are doing the tangent of b, it is the opposite over the adjacent, so we would have 7 over 24. 